What is up everybody and welcome to the cook-in live cooking at the crib presented by Ford's Gin. My name is Ryan Royster and I'm Byron Hughes. We are the co-founders of Last Supper Society. We treat every meal like it's our last. We are happy it's Friday. We are happy to be with you guys today. We're happy to share this amazing meal. Oh, it's Saturday. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. See, that's how the week has been, been right like there, y'all. <laughs> but, but it's Saturday. Uh, we have an amazing partnership this week with the National Coalition for 100 Black Women. We are celebrating black women today. That is uh, being uh, wrapped up also in our guest, Dr. Kade. We will introduce her later. But before we get into the business, let's get a drink in our hands, everybody. Let's unwind on this Saturday. So take a look at this conversation that we had with Dr. E from NCBW. Uh, about all the amazing things that they are doing in the Sacramento community. Check out the sit presented by Forge Gin, and we'll be right back to holla at you. Dr. E, thank you so much for welcoming us into your beautiful home today, and thank you for sharing your time and space with us for The Sip. Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what it is that you do? I am Dr. Elizabeth Sherelle Davis. I am the president of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women Sacramento Chapter. Dr. E, tell us a little bit more about what it is that the 100 Black Women do. Well, again, we advocate on behalf of black women and young girls. Um, in terms of the Sacramento chapter, what we do is we have a STEAM mentoring program and a Fostering Hope program. And the focus there is to work closely in the Sacramento community to mentor our young girls starting at the age of eight through um, 17. When it comes to black women, uh, and specifically young girls right now and looking towards the, the next group of young black women leaders, how is NCBW reaching out uh, to that next generation? Well, um, in the Natomas area, in Sacramento, we have partnered with Natomas Middle School. And the partnership included a uh, memorandum of understanding as we develop the STEAM program. So that's one way is reaching out to the public school system so that we can um, provide our young girls with mentoring and future career opportunities. Dr. E, thank you so much for having us. Uh, this was an amazing conversation. We learned a ton about NCBW and everything you guys do in the community. We are excited for this partnership. We are excited for this experience and this event. Cheers to NCBW and the cook-in. Thank you, and I'll tell you, um, after this, I'm going to need a nap. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have Absolutely. a good evening. <laughs> the game on what NCBW has been doing in the Sacramento community and around the country for so long. We appreciate your guys' service. We are in a season where we have seen um, everyone tapping in together, but black women specifically linking up to drive change in our country right now. And on that note, I would like to introduce someone who is a Sacramento native born and raised, is now coming to us live from Oakland, mm -hmm. the Olivia Pope of diversity herself, Dr. Akila Kade. What's up, Akila? How you doing? Hi, gentlemen. How are you? How are you? Good we evening. are doing well. We are doing well. We are ready to have a great show. But more importantly, we are ready to introduce you to all of our people here. So introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Change Today. We're a diversity 
anti-racism consulting firm. We work with everyone from nonprofits to for-profits to Fortune 500s with their diversity strategy, not just here in America, around the world. Um, my company will be six years old in January, which I'm really proud about. And I'm doing all that I can with my experience as a black woman who's been discriminated time and time again in a nine to five space to make sure that that doesn't happen to other black women, BIPOC, black indigenous people of color, underrepresented, disabled, LGBTQ plus, whomever, so they can feel valued and appreciated. They don't have to get to a point where I was diagnosed with severe depression or major depressive disorder trying to fit into a box that wasn't designed for me. So if I can change that box for others, um, I do it tirelessly and passionately. And yeah, that's what I do. Absolutely. So that's, so that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is literally uh, amazing. You are doing so much work and you're so dynamic um, in what you do. I follow you. You're an amazing follow on IG and we've yeah. wanted you on the show for a long time now. Your friend uh, Tall Swag was on. Uh, a couple seasons ago. But also, yes. a couple other people. So Alexandra Z is yes. a great friend of mine. Uh -huh. And my other mom, Cassandra Jennings. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes, absolutely. So this is a family affair <laughs> link up. Um, tell us a little bit more about kind of your work in the community as well. I know you are active um, in, in social change and, and working not only on behalf of women, but people of color and also, uh, others that have been discriminated against. What else have you been involved in? <laughs> That's a big question. Um, I'm very happy and confident to say that I'm very biased towards black people, especially mm -hmm. black women, but you know, happy to spread the love yes. for everyone. Yes. Um, I have lots of things I do. So for one, this t-shirt, Keeping Amazing, it's at McMullen, which is the one of the very few high-end black-owned boutiques by Sherry McMullen. Um, so I'm a black designer there. I have a partnership um, with the Ally Nudge. So it's the first ever way to learn how to be an ally through text messages over a month. Oh, Proceeds wow. of that program go to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Um, I'm a creative, so I'm a stylist and a model and a photographer, and I do hey. all these other things because representation matters. Yes. I am someone who lives with invisible disability, and people wouldn't know that unless I share that. My body thinks it's having a heart attack all day, every day, so I live in chronic pain on my left side, and I have weakness on my left side. So wherever I show up is an act of resistance and also a place of joy, and so I go everywhere, you know, for representation okay. and amazing. changing the way that people view people like myself. That's amazing. I saw recently that you announced that you are now an ambassador for Lululemon, which is oh, yeah. amazing also that. because you um, do also have a disability. So the fact that you are a ambassador for an athletic apparel company is, I mean, again, that's just showing up in spaces um, that you are carving out your own space. And again, that's amazing. And it is, it's important to note that I, I love, uh, I've been working with Lululemon for two years, but ambassadorship just happened uh, a couple months ago. Um, when you're an ambassador, you have to practice your sweat life. So hashtag sweat life. My sweat life is dismantling white supremacy because it's heavy work um, to do that. And so, yes, I'm proud to be someone who has that disability, but also getting a larger message out to a larger worldwide audience, the importance of, you know, shutting that shit down. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we are going to dive into even more conversation because there's so many things to tackle. Um, but what we need to do is start our kitchen game off. So Chef B, I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to leave it to you and we're going to bust down in the kitchen. Let's bust it down. Let's get it. Thanks, Doug. <laughs> Hi, everyone. We're here at five, whatever time it is. Five o'clock, not a normal time, uh, but it's dark outside and I feel like it's seven anyway, so we're just gonna pretend like we're over there at seven o'clock right now. Um, we're gonna jump right into it. Uh, I'm happy to have you here, Doc, and we, um, we're gonna make some delicious food today. And I just want to take a second to do two things. First thing, look at this freaking dish. Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. This is called a tagine. Uh, this is the cooking device that you know we're gonna, I, I'll get into it later, but God, look at this thing. Uh, Number two, a uh, huge shout out to uh, my kitchen staff this week. We have had a week full of uh, activities and my guys have been rocking with me, you know, every day basically. And I just wanted to start this off by saying that because without them, this kit, I promise you, it would not be here right now. So, 
Um, let's get into it though, guys. Uh, the first thing I like to do, as usual, is go through our full ingredient list. Um, so let's start from the top, shall we? Uh, the first thing uh, we're gonna talk about is the fish. Halibut here. Uh, my sous chef wrote me a nice note on here for me and Ryan. Fish for Byron. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, There's a nice note on here from the sous chef. Uh, two pieces of halibut in there. Some of you guys got three pieces. It's all by weight, so you all got the same weight of fish. Um, this is designed to feed two people. So this fish came from Sunfish on Broadway. Shout out Nguyen and the whole team of the guys over there. They always take care of us for our, uh, our seafood. So if you ever need seafood, go to Sunfish, Broadway, Sacramento. That's that. Number two, big bag of green here. Um, so that um, this is arugula and curly parsley. We'll chop the heck out of that and put it in our couscous. Number three, you got a few ounces of chickpeas here. These are already cooked for you, so no need to worry about uh, cooking them too much. Uh, number four, we got a bag, another bag. Uh, what's in here? Got half a head of cauliflower. You got a delicata squash, which is one of my favorite ingredients in the, in the fall time. Um, when these guys start coming out, I get really excited about wearing sweaters and flannels and uh, lumberjack shirts. Chris is wearing one right now. Total winter vibes. Um, what else is in here? We got some Cipollini onions in here, which are these little short, weird looking onion guys, flat onions. I don't know how else to describe them. Um, super big flavor and they're great to eat whole. They're great in dishes like this because we can keep them in large chunks and they, they cook really nicely. Um, lastly in here is that shallot that will be macerated with a little bit of vinegar and that'll be used to flavor our couscous. What else do we got in here? Uh, this broth, this tomato broth. It's just a little bit. We don't need too much. It's a super concentrated stuff here. Uh, basically what it is, is first was made a veg stock or a vegetable stock. So typical ingredients, carrot, onion, celery, a little bit of aromatics in there. And then we fortified it. And we fortified it with these uh, sun-dried tomatoes that were first smoked and then uh, sun-dried. So super big flavor here. We might even need to dilute it a little bit because it's really strong. Uh, we don't want it to take over the dish, but get a whiff of that when you get a second. It's very delicious. We're gonna keep going. We got some special finishing salt here. This is like kind of a North African kind of spice blend, uh, similar to like maybe a zatar, but like with a little bit of chili in there. Oh, great. Um, and then we um, also mixed it with Malden, uh, which is a super flaky sea salt nice and crunchy and it gives a really nice texture to things and also that nice pop of salt and flavor. Uh, big favorite ingredient there. Uh, the vinegar, pomegranate vinegar, nothing crazy there. Uh, and then our harissa, the Last Supper Society harissa, yeah. So we brought back the sun-dried tomato in this one as well. They're not smoked, but it is made from um, sun-dried tomato paste. Uh, we mixed in some different kinds of chili paste in there, and then the, the usual suspects from uh, North Africa, where uh, harissa is from, uh, cumin, coriander, a uh, little salt in there, a little oil in there, uh, super big flavor bomb right here. This is going to be great for our, our just building a, a nice sauce in there. Uh, I didn't put on the list, but you got some couscous in there too. Looks like I'm missing one item. Uh, but uh, this is just, you know, your typical couscous, fine grain. Um, this stuff actually comes from pretty close to here in Sacramento, so happy to use it. And I'll show you guys the perfect way to make couscous. You're gonna love it, I promise. Uh, last on the list, the fig leaf. This is like, this is like one of my favorite ingredients. And we're not even gonna eat it. The stuff that it can do is just amazing. So what we're gonna do with it today is we're gonna use it to wrap our fish. It's gonna flavor our fish uh, with this just beautiful fragrant aroma of fig. Um, and uh, the, the, the fig leaf, it just has such a distinct smell. You guys will see when we get to cooking. Whew! That's our ingredients. All 10 of them. Uh, let's talk about what you'll need. Um, you will need a small pot with the lid that will cook the couscous in that. Um, and then you'll also need a mixing bowl, which we will mix the couscous in. I got it in the sink over here. And then going back to number one, the cooking vessel. Mine is called a tagine. Uh, and you'll notice this dish is also goes by the same name, tagine. It's the name of the dish and the name of the cooking vessel. Super special uh, cooking device here. Uh, you can't really replicate this, honestly. I think something to do with this dome shape causes the steam to behave a certain way inside of the, inside of the vessel. And it, just the way that it cooks is amazing. But if you don't have one, not a big deal. You can still use a nice heavy bottomed uh, wide pan with a good lid on it. Make sure that lid fits on there nice and tight. 
um, it's important to trap that steam in and really just let it, let it do its thing in there. So uh, don't worry if you don't have a tagine, guys. Does that vessel need to be oven safe? Yes. Oh, it does need to be oven safe. Yes. Uh, thank you, Ryan. He's getting good at this, you guys. Hey. So yes, your, your vessel that you're cooking in should be oven safe. You, you know, no plastic handles. Some rubbers might not be good in the oven, too. So just be conscious of that. Grab your oven safe stuff. Okay. Now that I've made a huge mess over here and we are all ready to get started, I think I'm going to do a little quick cleanup. And... Oh, Ryan wants my... Uh, Ryan wants the laptop back. I gotta give it back, you guys. Goodbye, laptop. So, Akilah, you ready to go? Woo-wee! Let's get my mise en place here. Okay, guys, first thing we're doing today is we're gonna start this couscous. So, uh, the water ratio for couscous is a little bit over one to one. So, you wanna get the same amount of liquid um, a little bit more than the same amount of couscous that you have. Uh, we're gonna bring that to a boil. I've already got mine in the, uh, on the stove, so I'll just get it going. All right, now, it's such a small amount of water, it'll boil quick. So just leave the lid on, let it do its thing, get your couscous open here. Do we want these in the same pan that we're putting in the oven, or is this different? This is a different one. This is uh, the small okay. pot that, was, that uh, you should have grabbed, um, small pot with the lid. Um, definitely different. Um, it can be, you know, mine is a little big. I like mine to be a little bit wider um, just so I can see the couscous kind of like and just adjust better. A smaller pot will, you know, the couscous will uh, be more, it'll stack higher. So you won't really be able to uh, see if it's cooking evenly or not. So nice uh, small pan with, or medium sized pan with, um, with a lid on it. Now, if you're wait, like me and you're waiting for your water to boil, um, we can actually do some prep work here. So let's get our shallot out, guys. We're jumping over the ingredients. We're calling audibles over here. We're going to take our shallot out of the bag. And if you've worked with me before, then you have seen this before. This is a technique called maceration. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to cut our shallot brunoise. Okay? So if you are not familiar, just follow me here. First step, this is the root end. The opposite of the root end, we're gonna take it off. Nice. You with me, guys? Okay. Next, we're going to slice our shallot, put that flat side down on the cutting board so it's nice and stable. And then we're gonna slice our shallot in half through that root end that we identified a few seconds ago. Two pieces. You guys all here with me? Easy. Next. Peel it. I like when I got a garbage can right here on my left. This is great. Peel our shallot. Wow, this one's giving me some trouble. Little guy. Peel this one. And get rid of those skins. All right. So now we have these two beautiful halves of shallots, nice and smooth and shiny. So. We keep the root in on because it kind of helps the shallot stay together when we do this knife skill. Um, so that's, and we're gonna, we're just, we're just gonna kind of hold onto that end there, okay? And so the first thing we're gonna do is our vertical cut. So, you know, if you, man, I need to take my knives to uh, Gabe and get him sharpened. Shout out Gabe at a uh, Crocker Cutlery. He needs the, I need you Gabe. Um, so I've done my vertical incisions. Now I'm just gonna go through the middle with my knife uh, parallel with my cutting board. And we're gonna go through that shallot almost all the way to the root end. Just one time in the middle is fine. We're not going super small on this one. Okay guys? So a bunch of verticals and then one horizontal? Horizontal? Yeah, yeah. horizontal, that yeah. was horizontal. Real quick, Chef, how much water is in our pot? Um, so you got about eight ounces of couscous. So you want about eight ounces, or eight uh, volume ounces. So you want about eight ounces, I would say about nine to 10 ounces of water. My water's boiling. Nice. I'm actually gonna add a little, just a little splash in here because it's boiling for a second. You can't really screw this up guys, I promise. A little bit more in there, a little splash. Okay, everybody, is everybody with me? Everybody's water's boiling? Doc, is your, is your water boiling? 
It's almost there. Almost there. Okay. So you let me know when your water's boiling, and then we'll do the we'll do the couscous. Let's okay. just go, let's go through our other side of our shallot right now, guys. So vertical first, and then one horizontal. Okay. And then to finish the cut, the vertical slices that we did, we're going to cut perpendicular to those. So imagine making a little cube going across those vertical guys like that. Okay. And what you're left with is nice little pieces of... <laughs> Nice little pieces of shallot like this, guys. It's okay if yours aren't this small. It's not going to make or break the dish. We just need to get them busted down into somewhat uniformity. Water's having a little power hour over here. <laughs> Put that on. Night, Callie, everyone. Um, let's cut this other half, too. How's that water? Hear it. We're in business. We are in business. I'm in business. You guys at home should be in business now, unless you're, like, cooking over a campfire or something. I don't know what the heck you're doing at home. Okay, so lid's off. i get a little spooner here. Couscous goes in, and while we're pouring it in, we're just going to stir at the same time. Make sure it's getting distributed evenly around that pan. Okay. And we're just going to let this kind of simmer and boil for like two minutes. Just let it just kind of meet with that heat, stirring it, making sure it's not burning. The couscous will absorb up that water real fast. It's okay if it's starting to look a little dry in the pan. We're not cooking this for very long. You know, just kind of get it off the sides there. Let me show you guys what I got in my pan. This, this is what mine looks like right now. Okay? It's absorbed all that water. I'm just going to let it go on that heat for maybe another, you know, 30 seconds or so, I think. It's fine. Let it get nice and hot in that pan. <laughs> I'm on like, I'm on a six on this electric stove here at 1801L. Um, if you're on electric, I would say about somewhere around there too. On a gas, you want to go a little bit lower. That flame might burn your, uh, might burn your couscous. Yeah. So if you're on gas, I would say like three, mm -hmm. three, four. Gas okay. light. So that's great. It's absorbed all the water. I'm looking at it starting to firm up a little bit. Immediately put that lid on and you can leave it on the spot that it was cooking on. That ambient heat will kind of keep it warm and keep it steaming. Um, so leave it on that same burner that you, uh, that you cooked it on. Don't take it off. And that's our couscous, guys. How easy was that? Now we're going to let it steam in there for just a few minutes. And then when we're ready to mess with it, we're just going to fluff it up a little bit and it'll be perfect. Okay, back to the shallot situation. So we've got our shallots cut and into a bowl. Little bowl here. How's your couscous? Your couscous get in there good, Doc? It is good, yes. Right. It's covered, it's just chilling on the existing heat. So we're putting the shallots in a bowl. Shallots in a bowl. This should be cut nicely. No giant chunks in there, unless you like that sort of thing. I mean, like I mean, biting giant raw delicious. chunks of shallot. Some kind of monster. Okay, shallots in a bowl. And then we're going to take that little liquid that we got there, that pom pomegranate vinegar. And we're going to okay. dump it right in with the shallots. Let them swim in that... Uh, that vinegar. So this is maceration. What we're doing is we're breaking down that shallot with the, the acid from the vinegar is breaking it down. So it's making it a lot less raw. It's kind of cooking it in a way. Acid has that effect on certain things. And then it's also flavoring that shallot. So the shallot's going to soak up that vinegar and become these little flavor bombs. And also what it's doing is, uh, you know, the shallot is also flavoring the vinegar too. So we let this sit long enough, magical things happen. Put it over there. Don't think about it for a while. All right. Now, up next, we are going to work with all of our vegetables. This is fun. So we can just get this guy open. It's so extra. You like that? It was a Ziploc bag that 
Yeah. Just opened I'm sorry. It's just a habit, you guys. <laughs> I'm in a full chef mode this been week. Reused. You could have reused it. This week. <laughs> You're right. I could have reused that. I, I definitely screwed that one up, you guys. I'm in full chef mode this week. Usually we're used to opening up like these vacuum bags like that. Yeah. So it's just such a natural thing. Bag is just like, like in the kitchen, we rarely even use Ziplocs. Real quick, chef, heat is off on the stove. Heat's off. Couscous off. Couscous is off, guys. Couscous is off. Okay, what do we want to cut first? What do you want to cut first? How much pomegranate vinegar do we do in this? All of it. All of it. Dump the whole thing in there, guys. The whole thing is dumped. Dump it. Dump it. Okay, what should we cut first? Let's let, let's let Akilah choose. Your favorite. Yes. I was hoping you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I listen. <laughs> so super special squash, you guys. I mean, you can get them kind of year round in certain places, but they're the best when it's like fall, full autumn swing. The great thing and my favorite thing about this squash, other than its flavor, is that you can eat the skin. You don't got to peel it. So super special squash, guys. And this is an heirloom, uh, an heirloom delicata, too. So that's why it's really little. Usually they're kind of big. This is like a nice Love it. special heirloom one. OK, so first step we're going to do is we're going to take off each end. Be careful. It's a squash, so it's going to be hard. Don't cut yep. yourself. Just make sure you got a nice, stable cutting board, nice, stable grip on everything, and take your time. Bye bye. Next, we're going to go right through the middle. So put it up on one of those flat surfaces. Again, we want to keep it super stable because it's really hard. And if you have a dull knife, you could really mess your fingers up. Slice. Boom. Seeds are that. exposed. You can keep these seeds, guys, if you want to like, like make some pumpkin seeds or something. Like if you like that sort of thing, you can roast these. But I have no plans on doing such thing. So we'll just scoop them out today. I think I still have pumpkin seeds from, or pepitas is what we call them, but squash seeds from last season. They're sitting in my pantry. <laughs> okay, and I'm just like looking real sketchy over here, like hovering over a trash can and using the back of a spoon to scoop these seeds out. Um, please don't mind me, guys. How you guys doing in the chat? I'm in here with you guys, so uh, holler at me. Let me know how your so, week is going. Chat. Let me know how your couscous is looking. Holla at your boy. So fluffy. Sorry, but it Can is. Can we What'd you say? My couscous is looking so fluffy. Oh, so yeah. So happy. Yeah. We like the fluff. Friend. The trick is just to hydrate it. And like, you know, it's a, it's a really fine grain thing. So it doesn't take a bunch of cooking. Like, I think <laughs> steam is, is the, the traditional way to cook it. They don't even yeah. put it in water. So, um, you know, when we're at home, you know, maybe you don't have a steamer or something. Um, this is a good, you know, everyday way to cook couscous. And it's so easy, too. God, it's so easy. Okay, squash is cut. So I think for me, I want to have these in little, you know, little half moons. So I would say about, I don't know, maybe, what is that, half an inch? Quarter of an inch? Sure. Look, I think my thumb right here. I would say that's about a third of an inch. That's how you measured right there? Yeah, they always say that this part of your finger is like an inch. You never heard about that? They say that? Who's they? Yeah, you know, people. <laughs> okay. You never heard that? I'm with it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the thumb measurement. Guys, have you ever heard that before? Please, somebody, let me know. I'm not the only one yeah, I've heard no, of this. Yeah, no, finger. Right? It's fine. I validate you. Okay, thank you. Thing. Yeah, you're thank welcome. Thank you is an inch. Bro. Okay, keep going. So the trick here, guys, not really to go for any crazy knife cut. We just want to make sure everything is like a uniform size because we want it to cook evenly, right? So. Um, the cauliflower needs to be around the same size as the squash and the onions need to be around the same size as everybody needs to be the same size. Okay, so let's just try and cut as uniform as possible. I will be judging uh, your final plates uh, <laughs> based on uniformity of vegetables. Again. Ooh, that one got can a little big say, on me. Like, can I just say yes, chef? <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, we do, we, yeah, that, that, uh, that phrase gives me freaking nightmares, like nightmares. I mean, I can only imagine, can only imagine. As, as we're cutting. Oh, I just cut through that without even saying, I'm sorry guys. Okay. okay, cauliflower. See, I'm in total chef mode this week. Dude, we cooked for like, we must have cooked for like over a hundred people this week. It's been, it's been a, a very cooky week. I feel very Cook. chefy. Yeah, chef up. Chefy, <laughs> we've been cooking up a lot. So yep. sorry guys, I got a little ahead of myself. I'm just trying to get this thing done. Okay, so cauliflower. 
Got your delicata squash cut. Cauliflower. Look at where the, st uh, the stem comes down, stalk, stalk, I mean, comes down. And we're going to try and visualize t like a triangle here. So I started here, one, and cut through. And then I did another one here. And what you're left with is kind of this stalk being out and all the florets being here ready for you to work. And then you can just start breaking it with your hands. Will you Try not to destroy them. You want to keep them as, keep the integrity of the pieces so we can work from them after that. And this brown stuff on here, guys, this is just part of cauliflower. I mean, the stuff's organic. Um, you know, vegetables be doing some weird stuff sometimes. This is totally fine. It's totally normal to see on cauliflower. It's not a bad thing. It's not dirt or anything. Like that. So we're breaking these apart with our fingers, keeping nice big chunks. Okay. This one could probably be broke here. You can just kind of look and see where you can break it at. And then from there, we're going to go through and process. Remember I said uniformity. So this doesn't even look like this. But we're going to try and you know, imagine what the same amount of cauliflower would be as this. So I think for me, any of these big ones, I'm going to slice in half. Like these single ones get sliced in half. Um, ones like this can even stay whole. But these really big ones, you want to want to break them down. So this one I'll cut in half and in a quarter, exposing those nice flat sides. Again, in a quarter here. That looks good. Okay. And this is a weird one. Yeah, I can't I can't tell you how to cut your cauliflower, guys. Everyone's different, so just kind of use some discretion there. Use some use some instinct. I need you to use some Ooh. kitchen chefy cookie instinct. Cauliflower so, preference, if you will. Yes. Cauliflower yes. preference. Cauliflower. Akila, I have a question for you. When yes. I think about, or when, I think when most people think about diversity in the workplace, mm -hmm. we're thinking about hire more black people, hire more women, hire more people of color. When I think about it, it's more, you know, when you hire more black people, women of color, people of color in general, if the power structures exist the same way, not much still changes in those organizations. What, when you are working um, and consulting with these companies, what does diversity mean to you? What are you trying to achieve? It's not what diversity means to me, it's what diversity means for the company. They right. have to have their actions and words with their definition of diversity, because diversity is personal, even mm -hmm. at a business, even as a CEO, down to middle manager, frontline staff, it's personal. So that company has to make the definition of what diversity is. So diversity to them means bringing in more women and sometimes LGBTQ plus community. That's sometimes code for we still want more white people or the dominant culture in the workplace. And if that's the case, they have to communicate that. Other people want to be a little bit more explicit. So they're like, diversity means all of these things, but we're putting our time and energy towards bringing in black, Latinx, Hispanic people to really diversify the workforce. So when you have that shared language, it's easier to not let people down too much, but put people in the same direction and not get into a position where, again, people are like, but you know, my friend and their diversity strategy is this, why isn't our diversity strategy that mm -hmm. right? So that's what, I, that's what I say. Personally, um, usually because workforces are led by white people, white men and white women, there's lots of opportunities to diversify executive leadership so things can be more intentional, right? Because we're always, as BIPOC people, we're always thinking about other people, which is kind of just natural because of how we have to operate in this world. So, you know, I would love to see more Black and Latinx Hispanic people at the top. Likewise. How's that? Dope. Oh, working on it. We're working on it. Working on it. Actively. Okay, <laughs> yeah. uh, cauliflower's prepped it's up. In, wait, it's important to note, not the code switching people. Yeah. Uh, mm. you know, Ryan actually introduced that term to me. You're the first person I heard use code switch before. Yeah. I, when I think of yeah. codes, I'm thinking of video games. G codes. <laughs> For us, we, switch to this other code? we yeah. use it as part of our brand. We exist in the world in many spaces, specifically doing fine dining yeah. and specifically being where we are from mm -hmm. in the world, yep. um, specifically in Sacramento, Oak Park, some of these other neighborhoods. Yeah. And we exist in all spaces with absolutely no code switch. We are who we are no matter what room we are in. 
Um, we conduct ourselves in a way that's authentically us at all times. No at code switch. Time. At all times. No that's code switching. Yeah. You're here first. We ain't code switching. <laughs> switching no yeah. codes. All right? No. All right, let's cut these onions. Can. So they get all of these chains in the meeting. So <laughs> code switching here. <laughs> You're gonna get this Africa. You're gonna get let's it. Let's go. So. <laughs> Okay, so guys, now I've seen the cut for uh, our main veg for the tagine is the onion. Uh, depending on your preference, uh, you know, how, how much you like onions, I guess. Um, you can either cut them in half or you can cut them into quarters. I'm going to cut one into quarters so we have like some like varied sizes because that looks cool on a plate. And then I'll cut one in half too. Whoop. Look at that. We already did the work of peeling them for you and everything. Have you guys ever peeled a cipollini onion? You ever peeled a cipollini onion? What kind of onion is it? Cipollini. Cipollini. Cipollini onion. You little guy. Little what did you call onion. me? <laughs> cipollini. Oh, it's in there. Okay, so peeling these, one of the worst jobs to have in the kitchen ever. God, flashbacks, flashbacks. Okay, so if all of your veg is cut up, we can start thinking about cooking it off. Uh, how are you doing on your end, Doc? I'm doing are pretty you? good. Okay. I decided to follow your lead and do a half and a quarter. There you go. So, I like that. Yeah. Switch it up. You're welcome. Uh, while we're uh, getting through it, I'm just going to take a look at my couscous here. You can see that it is like a solid situation now. Solid. <laughs> it's no longer liquid in there. And the, the, uh, the grains have fluffed up quite a bit. So from here, you could just kind of... You mean like solid like dope? You can just kind of break it up with your... You know, any device that you have next to you. I have a spoon. Okay. And if it's a little clumpy and sticky, that's okay. Because we can, we can you know, we're going to be adding liquid to this. So it'll help break it apart. We just want to make sure our grains are nice and fluffy and ready to go. Look at this. I'm just really just breaking this stuff up with my spoon, back of my spoon. You can't screw it up, guys. Okay. Delicious. Pretty good. A fork is probably a better tool for this. Um, mm. I ain't got no fork right now, so we're just going to use this spoon right here. All right. Looking good. Maybe a little taste here. And I didn't season this because we'll season it after. We're going to mix it with other stuff. So. Ooh, so fun to eat. All right. Are we so, tasting our couscous? Yeah, taste it. Taste your couscous. Reach your hand, your, your bare hand, into that hot pot of couscous <laughs> like I did. And then put it into your mouth. Disclaimer. Do I not. know. I do it all the time. I have like grandma hands. Yeah. You know, grandma hands, you can just get all oh, the yeah. heat. Yeah. I can stick my hand directly in a deep fryer. It won't even burn. <laughs> and what do you feel? <laughs> don't do okay, that. Okay, so vegetables cut up, guys. We are going to start cooking some stuff. I hope I don't set off a fire alarm. So we're going to start by making sure this thing works. And getting our pan on a high flame, we can start off at a high flame and we can get some oil in there. How much oil is going to depend on the size of your pan, how much surface area you have. I don't have a ton of surface area here. This thing's only like, you know, eight to ten inches, big. let's say about ten inches big. So I'm, I'm not working with a lot of surface area. So I am going to use a little extra. And we're going to let that get nice and hot for us because we're going to sear our vegetables first. This is the first step. We're going to get some nice color on there. And then, uh, you know, once some color starts to develop, we'll start working with that harissa, that little. Yeah, let's look at our harissa too, guys. I'll wait for this to. Let's like smell it, taste it maybe. It's intense. Mm -hmm. It's intense. Another full chef mode move. Just a knife into the deli cup. I thought you were going to lick the, the knife. I thought you were going to go knife into the deli cup. And lick the and knife. That's what I thought you were going to do. <laughs> Why would I do something like that's that? That's what, man, you're on one today. <laughs> that's crazy. Licking knives. That harissa going stupid. I'm very happy with that, you guys. I was, when we made it, I made it like very last minute today. It was, I was, oh. Oh, no. Did my thing just break? <gasps> did it? It broke, bro. It cracked. It did. My tagine cracked, you guys. Oh my God. Wow. That's terrible. All right. No. All right, guys. You're going to have to follow me. Follow me here. I hope you're not using a stoneware tagine, and I hope your tagine did not cook or just snap in half like that, like mine did. But we are creative people, so we will figure it out. 
My tagine's gonna be a little bit smaller, guys. I'm super sad that I don't get to use this. We will leave it up here for memories, RIP, <laughs> right. to the Visual tagine. aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, visual it aesthetic. just snapped. That, you know what? What a week. Remember that Young Thug, uh, uh, was it an album cover? I feel like that, that looked like the hat he was wearing in that. Oh, was that it right there? Yeah. Uh, he had a tagine hat on. All right, you guys. So I just snapped my freaking tagine. So I'm making a little pivot here. We're good at this. We're pivoting, right? Got to figure I mean, it out. So I'm going to cook it in a pot. I'm going to imagine that. So you're not going to go in the stove at all? Oh, yeah. I'm going in the stove. With, the, with that. I'm, I got to do it. I have to do it. What, do we, what else are we going to do? All right. got to get let's it. Let's run it. All right. So get our pan nice and hot. Your pan should already be hot. You can get your vegetables in the oil now and start to saute. Get them in there. They should all sizzle. the vegetables? Yeah, as much as you can fit in there. So I'm using a super small pan, so I'm not gonna be able to fit a lot. So Ryan is not gonna get any food tonight. Um, but I know a lot of people don't have tagines at home. A lot of people are probably using something kind of similar to this. Hopefully you have a wider one. Um, I did not plan ahead and bring a backup for the beautiful tagine. Mm, but we're gonna run with it. We gotta run with it. So starting over, getting my pan nice and hot. Don't overcrowd the pan either, you guys. You don't want it to be bunched up on top of each other. You want it to be one nice flat layer, okay? Think about a flat layer here. Just put as much as you can in your pan with, without stacking it up. Literally, it needs to be one even layer. So oil's warming up here. First in, I think I'll put my cauliflower. You want to hear a nice sizzle when those guys hit the pan. Turn that down a little bit. I, I got it hot. I got it. I was over hot, uh, high flame at the beginning to get it hot. Now I've reduced it down to like pretty low. Pretty low. We're like at like I don't know. This for me is like a three, two, two, three, something like that. Couple more pieces of cauliflower in here. Man, this is nowhere near as cool as a tagine. <laughs> now we're gonna get our squash in there. Make sure everybody is touching the pan on one flat edge. Okay. Nice, nice. If your pan starts to dry out a little bit, no big deal. Just add a little bit more oil. A few onions in there. I'm gonna put all the onions in there. Yeah. And I'm gonna season it slightly, adding in a couple other things that are heavily seasoned, but we do need to make sure we're salting each step. That chef fish, look at that. Nice. Veg is doing its thing. Mm -hmm. Onions yep. just went in, correct? Yeah, onions are in too. I had a little bit more fat here. So we're searing right now, guys. We want to develop color on that flat side. So we're not moving it around a bunch yet. We're letting it do its thing. You know, medium, medium, low flame. We started hot, so the pan should have retained a lot of that heat. So we're just bringing them that nice golden brown. Chef, quick yep. question yes, from yes, yes. Beatrice in the building. Would Beatrice. a cast iron Dutch oven work as a tagine that's, stand in? That's perfect. That's actually perfect. 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 Cast iron is going to keep that. It's going to retain that temperature, which is important too. That's why I wanted to use the, the ceramic because it really retains temperature really well. Um, and it kind of helps out in that cooking process. Metal is much, I think, you know, it can, it can lose temp or, you know, takes a little bit more, I think, to keep it at a certain temp. So I haven't even touched these, you guys. Look at, they're just doing their thing in there. So I'm going to check one. Nice, looking nice there. <laughs> All right, we got some nice golden brown happening on that situation of the cauliflower. Probably the same thing happening on the squash. That to me is a good sign that we can move on to the next step, which is adding in our paste. Now, I hope you guys tasted this. Again, it's, it's, it's a strong flavor. It's harissa, it's got a lot of spice in there. It's not spicy. Now, it's not hot, like it's not going to burn your mouth, but it's, it's heavily spiced. So if you are sensitive to spices or heavy flavors like that, you know, maybe you want to use a little bit less, but taste it before you put it in. I'm going in with all this. Going in. Look, that's super chefy right here. Look at that. Get all that stuff in there. Okay. Next up, we are going to distribute this uh, harissa paste around so we can start stirring it around. So we wanted to get in contact with all those vegetables and just kind of just, you know, you kind of got to be a little bit vigorous with this to get it to move. It's a paste. Once it starts to heat up, it'll spread a little easier. But just get in there. Just try and get everybody coated up nice. And you'll smell that immediately. Oh, 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, look, you just like beating it up in there, yeah. making sure everybody is nice and happy inside of the pan. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, oh we can add some chickpeas in now too guys, sorry. We can add in our chickpeas, and again, I'm using a super small pot. This, the chickpeas don't need to sear, so if you like a lot of chickpeas, you can go in with all of them. You can like kind of start stacking them up now. But um, I, I have a small pot here, so I will just go with maybe like, uh, yeah, put them all. All chickpeas in. So now we are gonna increase our heat now that we've got all three of those things in the pan. So we've got our vegetables that were seared, our chickpeas, and our harissa is in the pan. I'm gonna turn the heat up. What are we doing? We are going to caramelize that harissa paste. So this is going to be the base of our sauce, right? So the, that nice caramely, you know, burnt flavor, those flavors that have developed mm -hmm. from the caramelization are going to be the, the, this, uh, the base layer of our sauce. So um, get that going. I'm over like medium, medium high right now. You'll start to hear it sizzle, start to get real fragrant. Where's my uh, vegetable stock at? Here it is. Hey guys. Okay, now I am with a different pan now, so I have to kind of adjust a little bit here, but next thing, with the heat still on pretty high, veg stock goes in. You want it to sizzle. Nice. Get a little, get a little steam facial there. Oh, yeah. A little steam facial. Open them pores up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nice, you know, coriander. Gets right in. That's what opens the pores up. <laughs> <laughs> it might have clogged my pores, actually. Okay, so that looks okay, but I'm just going to add a little bit more. And basically what you're trying to achieve here with the liquid is you want it to be maybe, if your ingredients are here, your liquid should come up to about halfway. So this is the bottom of the pan here. Look at this, I'm turfing. So bottom of the pan, top of the ingredients, you want the water to come up right in the middle there. So it should be half submerged and half out. Let me see the quick little turf though, Let's real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> right. So, uh, if you have a nice pan, you probably got some nice fond on the bottom from uh, uh, searing that tomato paste. Mine is like nonstick though, which is really stupid right now, but this is what we got. Um, so it's not, I didn't develop any fond in the bottom of the pan. That's okay though, because you just want to go in there and get up all of those little bits that have caramelized on the bottom of the pan. Use a wooden spoon or something. And now I'm going to let this simmer away for just a bit uh, and let it just kind of marry all together uh, and do some cleanup, guys. So please excuse me. Uh, la, 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 la. Sorry, I couldn't use all this cauliflower. <laughs> I'm just going to save those guys for another day. Yeah, this, looking at this pot situation, I definitely am going to have to go get some dinner tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Sorry, Ryan. I was just sorry. Not sorry. Big shout out to, uh, to Sheila, Dr. E, all of our 100 Black Women fam that are out there cooking with us today yeah, and enjoying so this conversation and just for all of you, all that you guys do. Appreciate you guys. Mm, the smell, the smell, the smell, the smell, the smell. So again, guys, if you didn't have enough liquid in that little container, it's totally fine. Add some water. You're going to be okay. I promise. You're going to be just fine. So I'm going to crank this down to like as low as it can go, as low as mine can go. Mine can't go very low, honestly. It'll just go out. And we will put the lid on and just let it do its thing while we get the rest of this stuff going here on episode four of The Cooking, presented by Forge Gin. What's up, Kevin and all the Forge Gin homies? We love you guys. All right, what do we want to do next? We want to prep our fish. So you should have, uh, if you read the instructions, you should have washed your fig leaves. Those did come from nature. Uh, so in nature, rain and dirt exists, uh, and sometimes it gets on the fig tree. So um, it's important that you wash your leaves so that you don't have any dirt or rain on your fig or bugs or whatever. Super organic though, I promise. Okay, so we're gonna need to prep these fig leaves real quick. 
uh, with a nice sharp knife, we want to remove that, uh, that stem there. So you're just going to kind of cut a V here like that. It's okay if it rips, not a big deal, not that serious. And we got the stem out, stems out. No stems, no sticks, no seeds. Okay. That's how it's done. That's how it's done. Boom. We're lit. And so we're going to wrap with the, uh, the dark green side on the outside, the pretty side. Well, both sides are pretty, really. I mean, these both look. I love the inside, too. It looks so cool. But this. Is it a freestyle um, wrap? What's that? Is it a freestyle wrap? Was, it, was, that, was that freestyle? <laughs> I think you're you rapping. Ready. You're, you're, we're rapping. Right what? Now. Oh, oh freestyle rap. Hey, oh, here we go. Oh my God. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, Are you let just me. Just disappointed um, with yourself because you didn't yes, get it right away. Yes. Or that I I'm could battle you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna open my fish now, you guys. Uh, <laughs> going back to that uh, bag opening technique I used earlier. Okay. And I'm going to uh, put that note, note side down, the note that uh, Matt left for me because I think it is not safe as uh, NSFW. Okay. Hey, so. you guys should be playing a drinking game at home that you guys drink every time um, Byron says it's not that serious or it's not a big deal. Because you guys <laughs> actually don't play that game because you guys would be on the floor by now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy. Okay, fish is out. Look how beautiful it is. That halibut was swimming like two days ago, so guaranteed freshness. Shout out the guys, Sunfish. They always have what we need. I'm um, happy to work with this product. So I'm just going to season this lightly with some salt. Okay. Not too much there. A little bit goes a long way because we we're going to be cooking the fish in with uh, our vegetables, so we don't want that salt coming down and over, you know, over salting our, our sauce that's in there too. So careful. Okay, so it's good. Next up, we are going to wrap. Now, what? No? We're going to envelop this My fish bad. into the uh, fig leaf. We ain't doing no more wrapping. We are no longer wrapping anymore, you guys. We are enveloping. <laughs> Is that the right way to say that? Envelop? Sure. And are we, can we envelop something? I mean, envelop? the intimidation factor was so real. Like you're just like, <laughs> did I you can't say the word anymore. Did you, for one, <laughs> Akilah tried to battle you and you froze. I dropped you a you guys, and you I'm, froze. I'm, okay, listen here. Okay, you guys, <laughs> I, we're cooking, all right? We ain't got time for none of this wrapping, all this mess. Okay, we, we are trying to create a restaurant quality dish and all the foolery <laughs> that's going on right now is, you know, we're not going to have all that, okay? So let's get to this fish you battle rappers, okay? <laughs> so pay attention here, guys. Fish, skin side, down, into the leaf. Again, these leaves came from nature, and nature things are not all the same size. Maybe your leaf is larger or smaller than mine. Not a big deal. Just get it in the center of that leaf. Take a shot, okay? <laughs> now we're going to wrap the sides over first. Just get it wrapped as best as you can. Bars. Okay. And then I'm going to take that top. Yeah, oh. Akilah's wrapping her tofu, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. And your tofu is massive, too. So you probably want to cut some even yeah. slices. So maybe like three slices for yours, I would say, would be about the right portion probably. size. Should I make people jealous with my tofu? Ooh. Yes, hey, show, show them Look the at super that. seasoned up marinated yeah. tofu. We seasoned hers with uh, some sumac that my buddy Omar it, just brought back from, I think it's from like Jordan or like uh, somewhere in the Middle East. Um, I can't remember. He gave me some saffron, like some sumac. It has this amazing ingredients. So you have a very special seasoned uh, tofu, madame. Okay, so I've got all my, my leaves wrapped over. You can kind of just give it some pressure too to get it to stick, and then we just turn it over. That's yeah. it. It's not that serious. It needs to be mainly covered, mostly. Uh, yeah, it's good. If you got it like that, then you're good. I'm going to do my next one here. Skin side down. Put that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. 
Ooh, this one's gonna wrap nicely. It's perfect. Boom. Boom, whatever. I like and I kind of put it, I kind of flip it over and let that weight kind of help seal it. And kind of give it some pressure there. Nice, 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 nice. Hand wash. Let's dry it off. Excellent. So guys, if you got your fig leaf wrapped, it's time to go in with the tagine. And again, with, the, with this technique, the fig leaf technique, this is a flavoring technique or a specifically a cooking technique for like texture? Or yeah, whatever. so it's, yeah, we're flavoring it and we are also um, helping trap in some of that moisture. Uh, and it also kind of helps retain a nice shape too when you wrap it like that. So it doesn't just like fall apart or get super flaky. Um, but yeah, it's mainly for the flavor. Beautiful. This used to be an old preservation technique. Uh, you salt it and then just wrap it in a fig leaf so that you could have it for many days. Maybe you would use more than one. Mm -hmm. uh, not be cheap like me and only use one fig leaf, but um, yeah, this is a, this is a super cool technique. Nice. All right, so fig wrapped halibut going directly on top of our vegetables. What are we doing? We are steaming it. I see my liquid getting a little low in there because we're cooking in this silly pot, and the way pots work is kind of dumb. Okay, so. We're steaming the fish. That liquid in the bottom is causing steam. We're trapping it with the lid. This, these fish are not in contact with any liquid, anything else other than the steam, okay? So we have like a natural like rack inside of there, which is the vegetables, keeping the fish from touching the bottom. Lid goes back on, pot, oven. 10 minutes, 15, I don't know what your oven does. I don't know how good your oven is. Don't be crazy. It's gonna take somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes, guys. Thank you, Ryan. Yes, yes. What's next? What's next, chef? What's that? I said, what's next, my what's guys? Next? Clean up. Clean up, because we're almost there, guys. Okay. Like I said, about 10, 15 minutes out. Once that's done, we should be finishing up our last project. Honestly, probably this, this shouldn't take 15 minutes, but let's rock in. I'm sure Ryan will come up with some excellent questions to ask if you have any <laughs> time. I'm good at this, you guys. Speaking of freestyle, I want, I want Dr. Kade to freestyle a little bit about uh, just messaging that you want to share right now. I know that we have a ton of allies, um, that, not only that follow us, but um, are, are cooking with us tonight. What about a message or a word for them? What can, what can those allies be doing to, to activate, to support, to help? Yeah. Um, so the most important thing for those who are allies is to not get into the position where you feel like you are at a point of arrival. If you feel like you're at a point of arrival, then that turns into performative allyship. So allyship is something that's continuous. It is a triathlon, not a sprint. Another friendly reminder for allies is if you feel like you're overwhelmed because something new happened um, to the black community or the community you're advocating for. Because allyship is not just between black people and white people. It can be between, you know, non-disabled, disabled, the list goes on, men and women, right? And so if you ever get to a point, particularly with black people, with what's happening right now with our social injustices, and you're like, oh, there's just so much. I don't know where to start. That is also a form of privilege, right? Because as a black woman, I don't have the luxury of taking a break for advocating for myself. I don't have the luxury of, you know, making sure that I am not being viewed as a, a stereotype, being biased, discriminated against, experiencing a microaggression or overt racism. So, you know, I think those things are important. The, on the flip side of that, allies need to remember to be patient, be patient with themselves, right? And in that place of patience, of learning and unlearning and figuring out those pockets of activism, advocacy, um, then you can continue that forward momentum. It's always action moving forward, no matter how big or small, it's action moving forward. Um, and then the last thing for allies is that they need to apologize. You're gonna make mistakes, but apologize for those mistakes. If you go back to a place where it's like, that's not what I meant, or when I was raised or in my community, then it's going back to a place of centering. And for white people, it goes back into white centering where they're focusing on themselves and not the harm that they personally cause by words or an action. So that's what allies can do. Allies are important. 
I love that. I love that. We got to work together, y'all. We got to work together to dismantle this. You know what? Two of my favorite allies are pomegranate and shallots. Okay. Is that what we're about to work with? What's up? Yeah. That is, that is what's going in next. Let's get it. All right. So let's get our couscous. So I cleaned up my station. Look at that, guys. Nice and clean. That's what I was doing. I got my couscous with me. And I got these greens out here. I've got my shallot situation. We're going to do the thing now. So let's get all of our parsley out. And then we're going to grab a good handful of that arug. That's short for arugula. For any reason, that. if our homies don't have any greens, mm. what can we do? I'm that homie. That homie is me. That's why I said it, Akila. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, what I'm do you fine. have in your fridge right now? I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, um, your couscous is not going to be green, unfortunately. Um, but it, oh, no, my that, couscous is fine. Um, You're forgetting I have other vegetables. We have this beautiful dressing that we're going to make. And some great, I, that, salt, that salt that you have in there really is going to be the big flavor kick that's going to make it delicious. So, be, so what I do have is there. dried parsley to add to some color, right? Because okay. I know you visually you'd like to see that because these are go. going in with couscous, right? Uh, no, we're going to keep them separate. This is a separate guy. Uh, but this is but for the yeah, the, the, you're going to kind of, you know, it'll all end up on the yeah. same plate. So. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I can add some dried parsley into yeah. that. I don't, totally I, fine. I may be out of any other lettuce type thing to have. Do you have a backyard? Maybe you can go clip some grass and do some like forward, I have you green know, onion, innovative. But oh, green, green onion, onion would be great. That would be perfect. You want me to? The greens on the green onion? That would be perfect. The greens on the green onion that I grow? Oh, oh. look at it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you don't want to cut that yeah. now, huh? All right, I understand. Well, I'm sorry no. that you're. That's why I grow it so I can eat it. Is it? Oh, let's eat it then. We need to get some I'm green in that to. couscous. So, so we're having this as like a little, a little side piece to the main <laughs> dish. Yes. <laughs> well, this is like yes. so. So, like when I develop a dish like this, like a one kind of like a one plate dish. I'm thinking yeah. of uh, three main components, right? So the first component is the protein or the, you know, it's kind of the star of yes. the dish. Next component is the starch because we want it to be filling mm -hmm. nice and, you know, round developed meal. The third component- the Acid. Acid or some type of sauce or dressing. Shout that out Samin one time. Shout out Samin. That Samine. is going to bring it all together. So like this is multi, this is going even deeper. So you know, our starch is going to contain the acid. And, you know, it's, it's, it, we're just getting weird with it. So we're taking basically a salad and a starch and mixing it together like that. So let's cut. So literally, guys, stems on and everything. We're just going to start whacking at this stuff and making as much noise as possible. Let's do it. And we're going to get a real small. And actually, grab a few whole leaves, guys, and just keep them to the side if you like. It'll be nice for a little garnishy thing. You should have plenty. And this is green couscous because there's hella greens in it, guys. It's going to appear to be green. We really want to break this stuff down a lot. Okay. Every time I do this, this, this thing falls out of my ear. <laughs> Keep going. We haven't stopped yet. And for you, Doc, I would just cut as thin as you can those green onions. Okay. Don't 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 chop them up like this, because onions don't like to be chopped like that. Uh, just you know, cut as thin as you can. Nice, good slices. Take your time. Make it green. That is a bust down, you guys. Bust down. Okay. Now this is ready to go into our couscous, but before I do that, I'm going to just kind of, you know, break this up a little bit more, make sure that it's not all clumpy. Clump Some small clumps are nice for like, uh, you know, uh, diversity and texture. 
but you know, nothing like massive. So just kind of use the side of your spoon or your fork to break it up. You know, we got something like that. Now that it's like cooled down a little bit, it's a little bit easier to work with. I, so in with the greens. We need to be thinking about checking our fish pretty soon here too, guys. In with the greens. In with our shallot and vinegar mixture. Everybody in the pool. Okay. Last piece, or not last piece, we got two more pieces actually. Just a little bit of that salt. Grab some of those big flakes. This is our salt here. We're seasoning it now. Okay. Now you got a lot of this stuff left over too, guys. This is finishing salt too, so you're not cooking with this. You're gonna finish a steak with it, or after the steak is done, cut it, salt, finishing salt. Love this stuff. Gives texture. And just that, again, that nice pop of like Is this salt. Last Supper Society proprietary special salt? I guess is it is, technically. Ooh. Let me know what you guys think. Should we, and let me know if we should bottle it up or something, because it's pretty easy to make this stuff. Well, don't tell them that, because we're going to be charging them money for it. Yeah, or maybe. It's really hard to, no. <laughs> <laughs> or or maybe, maybe we'll just like take all of those recipes of like the stuff that people ask for and mm -hmm. put it in a cookbook. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. That Just is saying. such a great idea. Unless Just you guys are saying. professional like free divers, do not hold your breath on Byron doing a cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get him to do it for nine months. All right, guys, so I'm mixing, mixing, mixing. I'm going to add a little bit of fat to this. Not all the salt, guys. Do not use all that oh, salt. Just no, 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 no. Sprinkle. I just did a little sprinkle. You do not need all this salt. This, this salt should last you for a while. That's why I gave you extra. It's really good. But it should last you for a while. Use it to finish a salad at the very end or use it to finish a cut piece of meat or you know, a raw vegetable. Like, a, like, a, like you know, it's not summer anymore, but like I, used, I love just getting a tomato and just some finishing salt, crunchy salt. Best snack. Mixing, I've added a little bit of olive oil to this. It does need some fat. And I'm feeling a little nervous about my fish, so I'm going to check it out. Mm-hmm, look what we have here. Okay, so let's just do this. So what, are, is, everyone, uh, is everyone checking on uh, the fish? Yeah, let's check our fish, guys. Check our fish. Well, let's, we, let's, get, let's get this finished up. We're almost okay. there. I've just taken it out for a second. We have Quentin Harris on wax right now saying that he will design the cookbook. He's in the, he's in the Let's chat. go. I want to work with you on a design, too. Quentin Let's is do it. on wax. You know, I was thinking if I made a cookbook, at the very least, the cover needs to be just very beautiful, like this visual thing it, where, like, if the cookbook is trash, you know, just in case, <laughs> it, at least it looks nice on your coffee table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the plan, guys. Um, it's actually happening. Um, coming soon. I think after season three wraps up, we're going to get in the lab and actually make a cookbook. Yep. Okay, so it's done. Couscous, nice actually. No, it's not. Taste it. Mm, I want a little bit more salt. And a little bit more fat. Okay. Mix, mix, mix. Mix, 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 mix. mix. All right. Ready to go. Now we can take a look see at our fish. I did not uh, burn this plastic handle off, so that's a good. That is. That's a good thing. Don't try this at home, but uh, it worked out. All right. 2020 right. taking us down, you know. What I'm nope. Nah, not today. Here we go. All right, guys. Get this dirty knife out of here. So we're gonna check this bad boy. Ooh, I almost touched that. I almost did it. Oh, steam coming up. Exfoliated again. Fig leaf facial now. Yeah. That's a nice feeling. So uh, use a tool, but you're gonna check this fish out. Should be nice and firm. <laughs> okay, it's hot. So what's our what's our uh, what are we it, checking for for doneness here? Um, it's really a feeling. It's a feeling. It shouldn't be like too jiggly. It should have firmed up. Uh, but if it's been in if it's been in a steamer for a ten to however long it's been for this long, it will be done. I promise. There's no way. So we're we taking it out. I'm taking mine out. I'm taking it out. Okay. Okay, so and then let's also take inventory of what's going on in our pan as well. 
Now I want my sauce, I think, to be a little bit thicker because it's still kind of loose here. Let me see if I can get my spoon washed so I can show you. I think I want a little bit of thickness added or thickness thicker, a little bit thicker, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Speaking my language. Speak. Okay, thick. This is still like nothing. So I'm gonna get my runner back out. And real quick, you guys can do this too. Ooh, that's hot. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna get it back over a medium high flame. And we're going to let that sauce reduce down a little bit. It'll go real quick. So this is if your sauce is not thick enough? Or yeah, it's, it? but it's, uh, it's up to preference. For me, it's not thick enough. I want it to be thicker. I want it to kind of coat those vegetables a little bit more. Maybe if you're eating this in a bowl, out of a bowl, then you would, don't need it to be thicker. Maybe you want it to be thinner. But for me, I think, and for the plating that we're going to do, I think we want it to be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty nice and thick. So, and it will happen naturally. Just let it go. You want to get boiling up. And we'll let it reduce down. How's your, uh, how's your fish looking? Nice and firmed up? Tofu. My tofu. tofu fish looks fantastic. Tofu. Mm -hmm. Great. Pretending that Thank it's halibut. Thank you for accepting me for who I am. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm happy to feed the uh, plant-based folks all the time. It, it's actually, oh, no. it, it actually I is not a challenge. Plant -based. Uh, no. Not plant-based. You're just, are you just vegetarian? Vegan. I am. I'm a Vegan? lacto ovo vegetarian. Lacto, Lacto yeah. ovo vegetarian and I that, see ovo I told you ovo. no eggs that's no eggs right no, no that means eggs <laughs> it means dairy and eggs dairy yeah, eggs not dairy all dairy dairy is under eggs under dairy yeah 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 you guys I heard it here that. first I did I've never heard it I've never heard of ovo well I read Ryan was trying to tell you about this last night I was like what are you talking about bro <laughs> <laughs> I've been a vegetarian all my life so wow. Nice. You were early to the game. You weren't with, you weren't with yeah. the trends. You were yeah. no code switching happening. <laughs> <laughs> early with straightforward. Okay, so my sauce is starting to reduce, get a little thicker. I'm gonna turn it off, and I think all my components are ready. I got my fish themed, wrapped up, nice. Hey, we got Robin. Our couscous. Hey Robin, we checked our uh, fish and we took it out. Our fish is done. Fish so is we done. took it out of our veg, but our sauce wasn't thick enough for chef's taste. So he now is re he he's heating that up and reducing it down. But the fish is out of our pan. Oh, yeah, I took the fish out of the pan, guys. You don't want to keep cooking that. It's just, this is done. Stop cooking the fish. <laughs> yeah. Take it out. <laughs> the homie Quentin said it's thick boy winter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm right there with you, brother. It's thick boy winter. I'm, I'm, trying, to put on a, I'm trying to put no, on that sorry, layer, uh, layer myself. Yeah, Get warmed up. up. All right, guys, so components, we have the couscous, the green couscous, looking great. Uh, the tagine's done. Sauce is nice and thick. We should probably taste this also. Taste that. So you're off the heat now. You got that little quick reduction, that little heat up, whoop de whoop and now I need a little salt in there, man. And we're back. I'm going light on the seasoning today, you guys. I don't know what's wrong with me. Seasoned up. Got a lot of black folks in here today, man. You got to be I had a little pinch of salt up, in my guy. Vegetables are nice and cooked. You guys taste your sauce taste, if you need to, taste, to add taste. some salt. Do that. Nice yeah. mix up in there. This is another little restaurant trick too. We do just add a little fat at the end because you know if we were at a French restaurant, we would be adding butter. But uh, if you got some really nice olive oil, which I do right here, just add a little squeeze in there of fat. You gotta make sure that's balanced. I want to make sure the mouthfeel is right. The gloss is correct. The gloss. Right? It's the things we consider in the restaurant, bro. The gloss. I think about this stuff. I might be the time. We're ready. We're done. Let's go to the plate, y'all. Hey. Yeah, I got one of these beautiful things right here. We played nut. We played nut. Yo, everybody, real quick. We're going to the plate. I mean, it's time for the plate up. That means we want to see your creativity on display. Whether it is a masterpiece or a beautiful mess, we want to see it. Get in your bag, build your beautiful plate, take a picture of it, post it on the gram, post it on the gram, and uh, tag Last Supper Society, use hashtag the cook in, and the winner of the most fire plating wins dinner on us next episode, episode five. And you won't want to miss that one, it's gonna be crazy. We'll announce it here pretty soon. 
Um, Akila says she's fire in the kitchen and she's a creative, so we are heavily scrutinizing what she's got. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at that, that, that vegetable size, y'all. And we're ultra black <laughs> right now. So uh, Ryan picked a play music this week. Yeah, Nas is taking us through this right now. Hey. My mother's listening to this right now. She's What's gonna, wrong with this song? There's going to be way too much, uh, I don't think way so. too much profanity. Bro. I don't think so. This is rap music. No, there's no, no we're good. Yeah, Nas okay. took care of us right here. Sorry, Mom. I didn't pick this song. I'm just saying, I love you, Nas. Love you, Nas. Get your plate up popping, y'all. I want to see it. Have fun with it. I'm just gonna go super just old school with it, bro. All right. Okay. Now, if you were serving one person, you might think about doing like this. Nice little clumps. I'm not even feeling like this is a. <laughs> Not that hot, but it's still hot enough. We need to grab a towel. We're gonna go on with these nice veg. It's like a veggie stew, basically, right there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you get some of that sauce on there. I'm really sad about my tagine. I was looking forward to using that all, all, all winter. Okay, next step. I'm gonna, so for the fish guys, we need to unwrap it. Unless you wanna serve it to your, whoever's eating it uh, and have them unwrap it themselves, it's kind of the fun of it, but it does need to be unwrapped. Do not eat the fig leaf. It's not very good. Uh, it's just a functional piece of vegetable or flower, plant, whatever. Uh, but it is not meant to be eaten unless you're some type of monster, dastardly person. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to want to peel that thing. You know, Ryan, I think I can make you a little plate. Yeah, yeah, let's peel one of them just to show the peel up process. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's do the peel up. up. All right, guys. So the peel up, peel, peel off, peel, peel off. off, peeling out. Okay. Simple. Just remember kind of which way you went, which I don't. Which order you folded these leaves in and just unwrap it. Oh man, it's so flaky. All right. And then we'll probably want to get that guy locally foraged from fig here. Leaf game. Ooh. From the hood. Mine is sticking to the leaf, leaf a little bit, but that is okay. Just be gentle with it. Boom. Right on top, maybe. And again, I want to add a little bit of fat, a little bit of olive oil. And this is a good time to use that finishing salt again, guys. A little olive oil there. And a little bit of that uwa. That finishing uwa? That whoopty. Really? That <laughs> whoopty. <laughs> That's it. That's the whoop, y'all. That's the whoop. Let's just clean it up and present it like a civilized person. Get that out of here. Get all this mess out of here. I'll tell you what, I ain't cooking nothing tomorrow. And that's on my mama. All right, a little wipe down. Oh, yeah. Before we have it, guys. Before we see Aquila's we break it down for him. All right, guys, we got the nice and fluffy green couscous underneath. We flavored it with the pomegranate vinegar and the shallot and the salt. Uh, going up from there, we got the nice vegetable stew, that vegetable tagine that we flavored with harissa and the smoked um, sun-dried tomato broth. Nice. Smells incredible right now. And then, of course, the fig leaf halibut. Mm. Finish it off with a little bit of olive oil to give it that little... That little... Mm -hmm. And some little uh, finishing salt on top of that as well. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this dish. One of my favorite things to make. Thanks for cooking with us. Absolutely. Now we got Akila plating up, taking her pick. Yes. Let, it, let, let us let the people see I didn't your take, work. I'm, um, Let's I'm unveil right. it. Unveil it. So, okay. There it is. The way that it makes, it makes Ooh, sense. There you, well, go. there you go. Something. There you go. Good job. Good Very job. Nice. You said you had game and you proved it. 
Actually, I mean, I guess uh, you got to taste have, it. Yeah, you got to taste have it. Have you not learned anything about me today? <laughs> that actually, my actions and words match. Yeah, absolutely. I gamed <laughs> up. Not be able to cook. Absolutely, absolutely. As you taste and we dip out, um, anything that you would like to share with the peeps, with our audience before we before we bid them good night. Yeah, um, regardless if you are a white person or a white passing BIPOC person or a BIPOC person or a black person, have boundaries. Take care of yourself first. You cannot give from an empty cup, as my good friend says. Um, I'm going to take a bite. And yes. if, it's, if it's not good. It's you cooked it's it. It's literally your fault. <laughs> you cooked it. <laughs> mm, that's not true because it's your <laughs> recipe. <laughs> it's not bad. Good. I would say I'm gonna have to marinate the tofu a little bit longer. Yeah. But otherwise, really loving the veggies. The couscous is delicious. Boom. There we go. Bringing it together, y'all. Yeah. Hey. I'm sure those who have fish like have a full on like yes. flavor explosion. So. Yep. Absolutely. Well, everybody, thank you. This was season three, episode four of the Cook In with Dr. A Kila Kaday and the National Association of 100 Black Women, all presented by Forge Gen. We love you all. Have a good night. Wash your hands. We're still in a pandemic. Peace, y'all. Hey, somebody, real quick before we dip, somebody called it a panty the other day, the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> they said we're in a panty right now. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Take, take that Another if you want to use that. Use that. But we're in a we're in a whole ass panty right now. So, all right. Good night, everybody. Thank you for tapping in. We love you guys. Peace. Peace.